All right, we're back to remote learning and um, we're back to quadratic functions. So what a cool way to start term three. Um, so quadratic functions is a bit of a step up from linear functions and exponential functions. So remember what we've covered so far is these straight line graphs, linear. We've looked at exponential functions that look like that. Parabolas look a bit different. So here's a different, here's a type of parabola. Okay, they're symmetrical about this thing here, the turning point, and they continue indefinitely up this way and this way. And they behave really differently to linear functions and um, exponential functions. So it's a really quite a long unit because of the different behavior of quadratic functions. Uh, there's a number of different algebraic moves that we need to learn or need to learn how to make. And actually what we learn from quadratics, we can apply to many other different functions um, if you intend to continue with maths methods or pursue maths methods in year 11. So let's get stuck into it. All right, so we'll start with a bit of revision. So in year nine, what you learned how to do, and I think actually year eight, in fact, we teach this in year seven now, is expanding expressions. So remember an expression is something that doesn't have an equal sign, so you can't solve it. So three X plus two is an expression. And um, sometimes like year sevens will say, oh, that's equal to um, say 11. And I sort of go, oh, why is it equal to 11? Like, how do you know that that was equal to 11? And they said, well, I let X equal three. And I sort of say, well, who told you X was three? Without any knowledge of what X is, three X plus two, in fact, equals three X plus two. But we can play with expressions. So in year seven, you would have learned that like X plus two X, equals three X. So what we can do with expressions is simplify them, change the way they look, um, do all sorts of things to them. So that's what expanding expressions is about, is basically changing the way it looks. We're saying that this is equal to the previous line. We're gonna make it look different. So what we do is we expand this using what we call the distributive law. So this negative two is going to be distributed across the two terms. Um, so we've got negative two times X, which is negative two X and negative two times negative seven. So what I tend to do is think about this. I go negative times a negative is a positive, two times seven is 14. All right, let's have a go at this one. So this one here is a positive times a positive. So this term here is going to be positive and I've got two X times one, which is two X. Positive times a negative is a negative. Two X times X is two X squared. Right, this one here, um, what we're going to do is distribute the X across the terms here. And I strongly advise you to put a one there and distribute the negative one across these two terms here. So I've got X multiplied by two X, which is two X squared. And a positive times a negative is a negative and X times one is just X. Now over here, we've got negative one times three, which is negative three, negative times a positive is a negative. And a negative times a negative is a positive. One times X is X. Now, don't um, pull a pin just yet because what we've got to do is just check whether we can collect up any like terms. So we've got negative X plus X. So they're going to cancel out and we're going to be left with two X squared take away three. So would this line be acceptable? No, okay, this is an unfinished simplify. It's implied when we um, simplify an expression that we simplify it um, in full. This is what I call sort of simplified. Okay, you've sort of done it. Um, like when I was younger, how I used to sort of do the dishes. Like I used to do just a terrible job thinking that, um, you know, like that my parents would say, hey, uh, like then don't worry about doing the dishes because you did them so badly. But in fact, dad taught me a lesson and said, go do them again and do them properly. So getting off on a tangent here, let's get into binomial factors. Okay, so again, what we're going to use or continue to use is the distributive law. Okay, so for this one here, what we're saying here is um, that X plus three gets multiplied by X take five. Now, how do we do that? Well, what we're gonna do is distribute the X across this first of all, and then the three across this. All right, so if we distribute the X first of all, I'm gonna say that it's gonna be X multiplied by X take five. And then I'm gonna distribute, so that's distributing the X across that and across that. And now I'm gonna distribute the three across the two terms as well. So I'm gonna say it's plus three multiplied by X take five. All right, now let's do it just like we did the previous example. So we're gonna go X times X is X squared. 
x times, so a positive times a negative is a negative, x times 5 is 5x. Now let's do this one, positive times a positive is a positive, 3x, positive times a negative is a negative, 3 fives are 15. Now make sure you check in particular these middle two terms, often we can collect up likes there. So I've got x squared take 2x, um, take away 15. Okay, so some of you would have invariably been taught um, how to do this using an acronym. The one I got taught in high school was FOIL, all right? And there seems to be a lot of resistance in teaching this. Um, well, I, I don't really mind if you use FOIL, just understand that all FOIL does is sorts out the distributive law for you, okay? So FOIL um, means, so I'll just write it, F-O-I-L, that's front, out, whoops, I can't spell out, out, in, and last. Okay, so that's what it means. So front, out, in, last. What that means is you multiply the front terms, the inner terms, the outer terms, and the last terms. And in essence, what you're doing is you're going to do this process here. So I'd love you to know why um, FOIL works. It's not just let's make up a way to expand because we want a good acronym. Um, it takes care of the distributive law for us. All right, I'm going to continue to use the distributive law. If you want to use FOIL, that's quite all right. All right, so this one here, we're going to distribute the x across x take 5 and the negative 2 root 2 across the x take 5. So let's do that. x take 5, take 2 root 2, x take 5. All right, now I'll expand it out. x squared, take 5x, take 2 root 2x, plus 10 root 2. So a bit of surds there coming back now. All right, now what can we do to collect it up? So we've got like terms here, but we can't really add those together. What we can do is make a, a, a cool move that will help you in year 11 methods. So what I'm going to do is write this as x squared. And now what I'm going to do is say that this here, I'm going to take out x as a common factor. So I'm going to say take x, 5 take, or 5 plus 2 root 2, um, plus 10 root 2. All right, now I'm also going to write this as x squared, take 5 plus 2 root 2, x plus 10 root 2. Okay, and then what we can see is actually the coefficient of the x term here is negative 5 plus 2 root 2. So that's the value of the coefficient of the x term. Okay, now that little move is not necessary at this stage, but I wanted to show you it because it does come up a fair bit in 11 methods and we use that to do a number of particular skills. All right, let's do this last one. All right, so a couple of ways of doing this one here. This negative sign out the front of this brackets here. Well, I've got to be honest with you, it's kind of annoying me. So what I'm going to distribute is negative 1 inside this bracket here. So this can be written as negative 1 times 5 take x times x take 3. So I'm just going to do negative 1 multiplied by this. Now remember, this is multiplication, so I could expand and then multiply by negative 1, and I'll get the same answer, but I want to do it this way. So it's going to be negative 1 times 5, which is negative 5, and negative 1 times negative x. So that's going to be x take 5. Now notice what I've done is I've just flipped the terms all in one hit. Now I'm going to multiply it by x take 3 because I haven't done that yet, which means I can now use the distributive law. x, x take 3, take 5, take 3. Now let's expand it, x squared. Take 3x, take 5x, plus 15. x squared, take 8x, plus 15. All right, so there it is. Now, you might have chosen to do that a different way, or you thought, think, why do that first? Well, okay, let's not do it. So I'm going to put the negative sign out, and then just expand this using the distributive law. So I'm going to go 5x take 3, um, take x x take 3. Close my brackets. So that negative sign is out that, out the front still, and I'm just expanding the brackets. So I'm going to negate whatever I get from here. 
let's see what happens. Negative, I'm going to get 5x, take 15, take x squared, uh, plus 3x. Still going to negate all of that stuff there, so let's drop a negative sign in front of everything. Negative 5x plus 15 plus x squared, take 3x. All right, now let's collect up our like terms. So we've got negative 5x and negative 3x here, and we've got an x squared and a 15. Now, it's good practice just to write the highest power term first, and then continue down to the second highest power and the lowest power, etc., etc. So we're gonna say that that's negative 8x plus 15. Anyone got a strange sense of deja vu? All right, there it is there, there it is there. Okay, so as the saying goes, I'm not a big fan of the saying, but, um, the saying is there's more than one way to skin a cat, and that's evidence of that. Um, there's more ways to do that one, so have a play around with that one. Now I'm going to show you something quickly on the calculator here. Let's get rid of this stuff here. And what we're going to do is just type in, let's just do this expression here. So what I want to do is check whether I've expanded it correctly by using uh, transform and expand. And what expand does is you essentially feed it an expression. And as the name suggests, it will expand it for you. Okay, so how do we go? Yeah, we got that right, that's good. Okay, now girls, I would love if you used your calculator to check your answers rather than the back of the book, okay? So that would just get you more and more um, quick or quicker on your calculator. Um, and um, yeah, you'll sort of be able to self-correct. You don't need the back of the book anymore. All right perfect square identity. So what we're going to do is expand this perfect square here. All right, so we can use this identity here, okay, um, or what we can do is two things, all right? So this is x takes 7, x takes 7, because that's what squared means. Like if I say 3 squared, well, that is equal to 3 times 3. It's whatever this is, um, it's multiplied by itself, so 3 by 3. So this all squared means it's x takes 7, by itself, which is x, x takes 7, takes 7, x takes 7. Um, then we've got x squared takes 7, x takes 7, x uh, plus 49, which is x squared take 14, x plus 49. Now you'll notice that something happens here every time you expand a perfect square is that this middle term can be made by doing x multiplied by negative 7, or this multiplied by the value of the um, this term here, and doubled, okay, because there'll always be two lots of it, okay? So there is actually a quick way to expand perfect squares, and um, those of you, again, seriously pursuing methods, I would encourage you to use this quicker method. All right, so what we do is we go to expand it, so this is what I would do. I go, it's going to be always x squared. The last term is going to be negative 7 all squared, which is 49. And the middle term will be two lots of this multiplied by this. So two lots of x times negative 7 is two lots of negative 7x, which just so happens is negative 14x. Exactly the same. All right, so what I'll do with this one, I'm going to use the shortcut first, and then I'm going to do it the long way second. So the expansion of this is x squared. Now, negative 5 squared is going to be just 5, because, uh, should I say negative 5? Root 5 squared is going to be 5. It's root 5 times root 5, remember, is just 5. Now, what's the middle term going to be? Well, I'm willing to bet it's going to be this multiplied by this doubled. So that's root 5 multiplied by x is root 5x. Doubled is 2 root 5x plus 2 root 5x. So that's the quick way of doing it. Let's go the long way. x plus root 5, x plus root 5 equals x times x or x, x plus root 5 plus root 5, x plus root 5, x squared plus root 5x plus root 5x plus 5, and again, two lots of it, so we're going to get x squared plus 2 root 5x plus 5. 
Okay, so you can see there one, two, three, four lines as opposed to one. Very efficient technique. All right, so this one here, I'm only going to use the identity. Okay, so I'm going to slam this out in one line here. So 3x squared. Okay, now common mistake here. Students will go, oh, that's 3x squared. Whoa, 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 be fair. Okay, so if you're going to square the first term, it all gets a shot of being squared. Okay, so if I say, hey, 3x all squared, that means you've got to square the 3 and square the x. So this is in fact 9x squared. Now the last term is going to be negative a half squared. Now that is going to be positive because it's being squared, and half times a half is a quarter. All right, now our middle term, it's going to be 3x multiplied by negative a half, which is negative 3x on 2, um, and that's going to be doubled. So negative, I have to write this one down because there's a bit going on here. Negative 3x on 2, and we're going to multiply that by 2 because we're going to get two lots of it. So that's negative 6x on 2, which is in fact negative 3x. Okay, so there it is. Okay, now I'd encourage you guys who couldn't follow that to just write it out like this. Go the kind of longer way. Might be longer, but hey, at least you're going to get it right. Okay, so just expand it using the distributive law. Probably the most common mistake I've seen in my 20 years of teaching is this one here. So students um, doing a perfect square expansion often will go x plus 2 all squared is the same as x squared plus 4. So what they do is they square the x and square the 2. Okay, now I know why students do this. Okay, because what they think or they get confused with this rule here. So 3x all squared, what you've got to do is square the 3 and square the x, okay, which is 9x squared. But this here is added um, here or it could be subtracted as well, um, which means that this doesn't mean just square that and square that. It means the whole thing gets multiplied by itself. So recall that that's going to be x plus 2, x plus 2. And when we expand that, we have to expand that using the distributive law. Okay. So in fact, this here will be x squared. It's going to be plus 4 at the end, but it's going to be 2 times x multiplied by 2 is 4x. All right. Difference of perfect squares, also known as dops. Okay. So what happens with dops is these middle terms cancel out. It'll always be subtraction because it's difference. Difference is subtraction. And it'll be the first term squared and the second term squared. Now, why? Well, I'll show you. So let's do this in full. So we've got 2x, um, 2x plus 1. Uh, whoopsie. Take away 1, 2x plus 1. All right, let's expand this thing out. So we've got 4x squared plus 2x, take 2x, take 1. All right, let's collect up our like terms. Now, notice what's happened here is plus 2x, take 2x cancels out, leaving us with 4x squared, take 1. Now, that always happens in these scenarios of dots. Now, how do I detect dots? Okay, so what I do is I look for same first term, same second term, reversed signs. All right, once I see that, I'm like, ooh, we've got some dops here. All right, so let's see what happens here. So this one here, I go, ooh, same first term, same second term, reversed signs. All right, so what will happen is all I need to do is square the first term, square the second term, and stick a negative sign in the middle. So AB all squared is going to be A squared B squared. And the last term is going to be c squared, and there will always be a subtraction in the middle. All right. Now, if you didn't realize that you had dops or a dop situation, you would just run the distributive law on it, and you'd get that anyway. So don't freak out if you miss the dops. It doesn't matter. All right. So this one here, ooh, same first term here, same second term here, reverse sign, we've got dops. So we're going to go y squared. Takeaway, because it's always going to be takeaway. It's a second term squared, root 2 squared. Remember, is root 2 times root 2, which takes us back to 2. 
So y squared take two. All right, and there's your work for the first part of the class.